Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new LEGO set, uh, the Republic Gunship, that has been released for 2023. So this set is very exciting to have and I'm really glad that LEGO finally decided to make another gunship. There are quite a few problems with this but it's also a quite good design so I will go over those later. This set currently retails for $150 and it has 1,083 pieces. This set also comes with five minifigures. We have Chancellor Palpatine, Padme Amidala, two shock troopers, and then Captain Fox as well. So a very good minifigure selection for this build. Overall, I think I'm really liking the minifigure selection. The only thing I really don't like about the minifigures is there are some inaccuracies between them. Looking at the first two minifigures, we have Chancellor Palpatine and Padme Amidala, and I have to say those two minifigures are really good. Chancellor Palpatine has a really nice red robe that is very accurate to the show, and then Padme is also a pretty good print. She just has a different, uh, basically, torso on than she does in the actual movie. But either way, I think that these two minifigures are good and they fit with the set really well. Looking at the two shock troopers as well, we have some really good print and design for them, and I'm very happy with how they look. I really think that LEGO did a step up when they did these because they are pretty accurate to the actual movie. The only thing I really don't like is the horrible helmet holes that they have, but otherwise I think that the minifigures are really good. Their print is nice and the coloring of their torso and legs are also nice as well. However, the final minifig we have to look at is Commander Fox. Now he has a lot of inaccuracies and honestly, I just, I, I can't even with this minifigure, it's, it's really bad. Now this minifigure is a good addition to the set, but he is very inaccurate to the actual set. If you notice on his breastplate under it, there is a sliver of white. And according to the show and to the Battlefront game, it is supposed to be a red uh, sliver right there. I'm not really sure why LEGO decided to add that in. It's really inaccurate and I just, I don't know why they decided to add that. It doesn't make any sense. It can't be that hard to add a little red sliver right there, but either way, that is one of the inaccuracies. The other inaccuracy, well, not really an inaccuracy, it's more of a pet peeve of mine is the waist cape is actually printed on, so they just have these little stripes next to him. Honestly, I wish LEGO would bring this back, and uh, honestly, it's it makes the minifigure so much better when they have a waist cape, so it's really disappointing to not be able to see it here. Otherwise, I think the minifigure is pretty good. Taking a look at the actual build itself, it is pretty nice, and I do really like this build a lot. There are a couple details that aren't completely accurate to the movie and to the actual ship, but overall, I think it's really good. Taking a look at the box art, you'll notice we have the shock troopers piloting the Coruscant Guard gunship, which is good because in the actual movie, they are piloting it. It's not some uh, older pilots from the Clone Wars that are supposed to be piloting gunships. It's actually the shock troopers that do pilot the ship. So that's really nice that LEGO decided to include that and not have more inaccuracies in this build. You'll also notice that this ship does have an interior, however it is smaller than a lot of the older gunships that we have. If you've noticed here, a minifigure can't really fit in there. It can, but it's quite more cramped than other ones. There is also the detail about the door. There should be two doors that open up, one going to the right and then one going to the left as a small side door. And this set doesn't have it, but I think aesthetically on the outside, it looks pretty good. Because if you remember on the older gunships, they would have the door that would be able to open one way and the other one. But then when they were closed, it really looked weird because there was always a slight difference between the level of each door. So it didn't look as good. I think this one when it's closed though is really good. This set is also equipped with stud shooters on both sides, which is not really an exciting thing. Uh, they're really bulky and they don't look very good on this build. I wish that they just wouldn't add them in here. Maybe could add them hiding under some spot better. But I think they're not too bad to where I absolutely hate this set. I just wish that they were in somewhere else. Looking at this picture, you'll also notice that there is a handle that is able to be pulled out of the body of the ship as well. You see here, you can pull it out and then you can lift it and play around with it and whatever. The only downside to this handle is when you look at it from the front, it does look pretty bulky way bulkier than other sets that we've had in the past. But overall, I don't think that's a really a bad issue. Um, I'm just gonna ignore that for now. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna buy this set because of that one handle piece. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't think it's a horrible thing either. If you look on the side here, you'll also notice we have these big panels with the Republic logo on them, which is actually really cool. And there's a really cool feature with those as well. So they are able to open up 
and you can store some things inside there. However, according to these pictures, there is nothing that is actually able to go inside there. The set doesn't include anything. So I think it's just for like kind of like extra pieces or something, but it's really unfortunate that LEGO didn't decide to add like some crates with weapons or something in it just to give it a little bit more of a playability function. The back of this build does also open up and you are able to put a minifigure through there. I'm not sure if you can stand him up and put him through there or if you're gonna have to slide him in. And we also have some extra storage up at the kind of corner top of the build. We have these little cabinets that are able to open. I think you can put some blasters and things inside of there as well. Also taking a look at the color scheme of this build, it is very exciting. I really like the dark red and white and light gray that they went with because honestly, I really like the look of all these colors together. You also notice that there aren't nearly as many stickers on this set as there were in previous gunships. I remember up on the wings, they would have a bunch of stickers up there, but now it's really nice and plain and simple. And I think it looks better, honestly. I'm really happy with the way that it came out and I'm really excited to see this set in person. Overall, I think I'm really excited for this set to come out. I really love the color scheme and the way everything ties in together. The tile paneling on the side is really nice and the cockpits look pretty good as well. I'm not really sure how close this is to minifigure scale, but either way, it does have the playability function. I think the only downside to this build is the fact that it is smaller than some other uh, gunships that we've got in the past and the minifigures, uh, some of the minifigures in this are a little bit of a letdown. But overall, I do think that I'm going to be uh, getting this set and I am pretty excited for it. Also, if you were looking to buy this set, you're not going to be able to buy it until September 1st, 2023, uh, because it is for the August wave, but they haven't released it yet. You can pre-order it, but you're not going to be able to instantly buy it and get it within a couple days um, until September 1st. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.